Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's Clinical Key Student Webinar. Uh, this session is being recorded, and we will be sending each of you an email with a link to this recording to share with your colleagues afterwards. I believe I may already know most of you on the call, but for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, my name is George Spice, and I'm your main point of contact for Clinical Key Student in Australia. So the purpose of today's session is to demonstrate how Clinical Key Student can be used to support the delivery of online and remote teaching and learning. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will be focusing on the nursing collection in Clinical Key Student. However, the functionality that we will be covering today is the same regardless of which collection you're using. Uh, we will have time at the end for Q&A. However, please also feel free to ask questions as we go along using the Q&A text box on this call. Okay, so today what we're going to be covering, um, to start off with, I'm going to go over what Clinical Key Student is, just for anybody who hasn't come across it before or, or who may have never heard of Clinical Key Student. I'm then going to be moving on to how to access Clinical Key Student as both um, a student, but also as um, an instructor. And then we're going to obviously move on to how to use Clinical Key Student. So covering things like how to find a textbook within Clinical Key Student, how to link to content from your online learning environments or from your learning management system to Clinical Key Student, uh, how to use some of the study tools that are on offer within the platform, uh, how to create a reading assignment, how to search for content, and how to export um, copyright cleared images into PowerPoint. Um, there is also a resource center on the platform that I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, and I'd also like to show you how to get support um, as there is quite a, um, quite a good support and help section as well. So that's pretty much what we're gonna be covering off on today. So firstly, what is Clinical Key Student? Well, Clinical Key Student can be described as an advanced search engine that delivers equal access to all students and educators to the very best of Elsevier's local Australian and international content in nursing or midwifery or medicine or dentistry education, depending on which collection you have access to. Now, this content consists of approximately, well, hundreds of e-textbooks, again, depending on which collection you have access to, uh, ancillary instructor teaching material, full text offline access, so users are able to download entire e-textbooks for offline access uh, for up to 12 months at a time, uh, personalized study tools, and exportable copyright cleared images. Um, however, I would suggest that the main benefit that your students and your users will, will have from access uh, to Clinical Key Student is the fact that they will be able to access all of their core uh, prescribed reading list content and textbooks that are published by Elsevier. So having all of that content in one single online central location. However, in addition to having access to all of that core prescribed course textbook content, um, they also will have access to all of the peripheral uh, supplementary recommended textbook content that perhaps they may never have got the chance to access either through purchasing um, from the bookshop or um, accessing via the library. So all of this content is essentially accessible and available to all users in one single online location. There is also a mobile app um, that will work on an iOS or an Android device, as well as also a desktop device as well. Um, and so we have had you know, feedback that having all of this uh, current, credible, evidence-based content um, you know, at the uh, fingertips of your students, no matter where they are and whenever they need it, really does make Clinical Key Student the ideal um, tool to help promote self-directed learning and research. Um, so there's no better way for me to really continue to uh, introduce Clinical Key Student to you than to bring up um, a live version and walk you through some of the key features and functions uh, that will help to support online and remote teaching and learning. So first I'd like to cover from how to access Clinical Key Student. 
So I know many of you on the call will already have access and will have already gone through those um, these steps. Um, but essentially, when you arrive at clinicalkey.com forward slash student, and as I said before, I'm going to be using the nursing example now. Um, you are presented with a login page. So obviously, if you already do have an account, um, then obviously you can log in at this point. Um, however, if you're a student, uh, once you are IP authenticated by the system, uh, as a first time user, you will need to register by clicking here. Now, the form itself isn't too arduous. It only asks for a first name, last name, email address and password um, of the choice of the user. And once those details have been completed, um, just by clicking on register, we'll then set up a personal account and take the user through to the platform. Um, if you are an instructor, however, you may wish to redeem a registration ID set of access codes. The reason that you may wish to do this is because instructors are able to um, access uh, the ancillary instructor material that I was referring to earlier. And this is only possible through redeeming a special instructor set of access codes. So I'll show you just how that process looks now. So if I were to go in as an instructor and redeem the set of access codes, the URL that I'd need to go to is uh, clinicalkey.com forward slash student forward slash um, nursing forward slash register. And we do have step-by-step -step instructions and guides on this, uh, but I just thought for the purposes of the call, it would be good to, um, to go through this with you as well. Now, the sets of codes typically look like this. Um, and as I said before, some of you may have already gone through this process before. Um, but once you copy and paste a set of codes into the field here and press enter, you then have the option to either um, log in if you already have an account um, or to go through and register a personal account in the same way um, that your students were able to once they were IP authenticated. And it might be worth mentioning that if you already do have an Elsevier account or an account with any one of these other platforms, uh, you can also use this uh, or those credentials to log in to Clinical Key Student as well. So that's really how you get access. And as I say, we do have more um, supporting material and um, yeah, guides on how you can do this. So once you're in and you've managed to log into Clinical Key Student, you're presented with uh, the home page um, here. Now, whenever I introduce Clinical Key Student, I would suggest that there are really two sort of high level ways that it can be used. Um, the first in its very simplest form is as an ebook platform. So as I mentioned before, providing equal access to all staff and students um, to the very best of Elsevier's content within nursing, midwifery, dentistry, medicine, whichever collection you have. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the sort of key features and functions around how it can be used as an ebook platform in a moment. But as you can probably tell as well, uh, from the fairly intuitive search bar within the center of the screen here, it can also be used as you know, a more sort of trustworthy, uh, evidence-based alternative to Google um, with a nursing focus, um, depending on which collection you have. So I'd also like to show you how it can be used um, as a search engine tool as well. So let's just say you're a student and you've arrived at Clinical Key Student and you're looking for a particular textbook. It is possible to search for textbooks um, through using this search bar here. However, what you're doing here is searching for the words of the title across all of the textbooks um, across the entire platform. So I would suggest the best way to find the textbook um, that you're looking for is to go to browse resources. And I'm going to walk you through each one of these tabs at the top here. So once you click into browse resources, um, you can find the title that you're looking for simply by typing uh, the first couple of letters within the title of that book. So the book I'm looking for is Understanding Pathophysiology, ANZ version. And just after typing in a few of those letters, I'm then presented with a list of textbooks with those letters in the title, like so. And so then I'm able to click through to the textbook of my choice. So that's probably one of the more sort of foolproof ways of accessing um, a textbook or navigating towards a textbook of your choice. However, of course, the most foolproof way of navigating um, as a student um, towards a textbook of, say, for example, the choice of um, the faculty is to simply have a deep URL durable link 
that would then sit in, say, for example, an online learning environment or a learning management system, or perhaps even an online reading list that would then, at the click of a button, take students directly to that particular textbook. So once you've arrived at the textbook, you'll see um, on the screen here now the table of contents for that textbook. And you'll notice that each of the um, book chapters that there is a link icon. And if I were to click that link, what that does is automatically copy a link to that chapter. So you can quite effortlessly create a durable link just by clicking on that icon. And then this link can then be pasted um, within your uh, online learning environment, within a learning management system, a PowerPoint presentation, an email, a Word document, and so on. And then upon clicking that link, I'm then taken straight through to that particular book chapter. Now you'll notice the appearance of the book chapter has been sort of reformatted to have quite a nice sort of clean black and white user interface. This is perfect because it lends quite well to a normal web browsing HTML experience, uh, whereby, you know, as a user, I can simply scroll down through the page and consume the content this way, as opposed to having that kind of traditional, more sort of clunky um, PDF view of um, individual ebook pages. Now, I'd like to draw your attention over to the left hand side of the book chapter here, where you can see sort of like a um, table of contents for the book chapter. You'll also notice on this table of contents for the book chapter um, that you also have a link next to these chapter sections too. So what this means is that I can not only link to entire textbooks or book chapters, but I'm also able to effortlessly link to much more granular chunks of content or chapter sections. And similarly to copying a link to a book chapter, I can then post this um, or embed this within my online learning environments um, which then at a click of a button will take students directly to um, a chapter section. So you can really sort of embed um, much more kind of accessible and actionable chunks of information within the workflows of, of your students as they're learning. So yeah, you can really, I guess, furnish your online learning environments um, with links to really, really granular pieces of content. So this is what I would probably call the online view of Clinical Key Student. So this is what the textbooks look like in HTML view. I'd like to now um, move on to the bookshelf view. So the bookshelf gives you the same view as the um, app, um, which as I mentioned before, can be downloaded onto a mobile device or a desktop device. Now, in order to access um, a textbook within your bookshelf, you must first launch it within your bookshelf. And you can always do this at the top of the book chapter here. So if I now click on that and launch this textbook within my bookshelf view, I'll then be taken through to what is known as the Clinical Key Student Bookshelf. And this is, I guess, what you could say is the offline view. So this is what the, the content will look like um, in the app in an offline situation. And as I mentioned before, these textbooks can be downloaded um, full text, entire ebooks um, for up to 12 months at a time via the app. And you can see from the appearance of the book chapter here um, that it doesn't actually, it, it's, it's been formatted in a way whereby you can download entire ebooks without actually taking up too much uh, memory within the device. And um, so, so the, yeah, the memory and the storage isn't affected too, too much or as much as you may think it would be due to the formatting of the file. So just to walk you through um, this, this view, the bookshelf view, um, I'll take you to the home area in a moment. Um, but firstly, just to cover off on the other icons, there is a course, a table of contents for the book within the bookshelf view. You can search across the book from within this bookshelf view as well. Um, this next area I'd like to show you is called uh, the notebook. So within this um, bookshelf view, there are a range of study tools uh, that can be used um, by students that are designed to um, align um, with studying and learning workflows. So for example, a student can uh, highlight text, uh, save highlights, uh, add, add notes to highlights, and so on. So these notes that can be added to a highlights can be either uh, public notes that can be shared um, and so can be viewed by peers that follow me within the system. Um, I'm also able to view the notes of peers that I follow within the system. 
um, by making my um, highlights public. And you can tell that that's a public highlight because of the people within the icon there. Or I can make it a private highlight just to be viewed by myself. Um, again, there is supporting material on um, this functionality, so I won't dwell on this um, for too long for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, but essentially, you can keep, uh, make, and share notes uh, within this bookshelf view. And these are also exportable um, into OneNote um, as well. And a fairly recently released feature is the uh, read aloud function. So it is possible also to uh, turn the text into speech um, and have essentially the system read the content to you as you're you know, not reading it essentially. So to move on from here as well, um, there is this uh, figures section, which is a central repository for all of the images within the textbook. And there is also a flashcard builder. So this is just another example of some of the study tools within this bookshelf view. Um, so here you can see a deck of flashcards I've made previously. Um, the flashcards can be created quite easily as well. For example, uh, after learning some basic principles from physical sciences, Oops. I'll just try this again. After learning some basic principles from, let's just say, I can then create a new flashcard from here. I'll add it to the deck I've already created. And then that automatically populates the front of the flashcards. And then at the back, I can then maybe highlight this particular piece of text here and then paste that into the back of the card. This then becomes a flashcard for me to revise from. The entire deck could also be viewed all in one go. And again, this is just, um, this is just an example of some of the study tools um, within the bookshelf view that I was referring to before. If I now take your um, attention up to the top left-hand side here, you'll see the home button. And if I click through to the home button of the bookshelf, this actually gives me my bookshelf. So every single title that I've launched within the bookshelf will actually appear within here for me to uh, refer back to. So within the offline, rather than having open book here, there'll be a sort of um, a cloud icon with a download button. Uh, so as long as I'm within internet and I click on that download button, I'll then be able to download the entire ebook to the app to view offline. Any subsequent notes or um, highlights that I make um, within the app offline uh, do sync up to the um, system uh, once I come uh, back online. So. I guess one of the other things I'd really like to highlight within this bookshelf view, um, especially from a faculty perspective, is the uh, reading assignment creator. So there's an icon up here called tools within the home view. If I click on that and select create assignments, I can essentially create a reading. So as opposed to maybe traditionally having within um, a teaching unit or you know, somewhere within my learning management system, um, an assignment whereby I request my students to read you know, page 100 to page 110 of understanding pathophysiology. What you're able to do with this tool is actually create a link that takes your students directly to that reading. And I'll show you how to do that now. If I click on create new and select the book I'd like to create a reading for, I can then call this, you know, essential reading week, maybe week, week eight, for example, or maybe nine. I can then either select um, an entire chapter, uh, a start and end point within the textbook, or you know, for the purposes of this example, I'll just select a page range. So again, I can select maybe page 100 to 109. Save that. Select done. This will then generate uh, a unique link that I can then copy and also embed within my online learning environments that will take students directly to the content that I require them to read before either you know, coming to the next online class. There it is. So I'm gonna just refer back to the HTML view now. We pretty much covered off on most of the key points for the bookshelf. Um, more than happy to provide more information on this um, outside of this session. Um, but that's essentially how the offline functionality um, looks like and um, works. So I'd like to now show you how Clinical Key Student, before I go into the presentations, uh, can be used as a more trusted evidence-based tool to Google with either a midwifery focus or a nursing focus, depending on which package you, um, you have access to. 
So of course you can uh, filter before you search, but let's just say I'm a student and I'm embarking upon an assignment on say hypertension, for example. I can, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, so I'm just gonna search for hypertension. You'll notice this smart search kick into play, just um, you know, similarly to how uh, Google works, so mimicking that, that similar Google-like experience, which can help students to shortcut to more targeted um, information if that's what they're looking for. But if I were to just search for hypertension across everything, as you can probably imagine, with such a broad term, I'm gonna get thousands and thousands of results. Uh, one thing I would always recommend when using Clinical Key Student as um, you know, a Google alternative or a Google for nursing, for example, is the more specific you can be with your search terms, the more accurate your search results will be. So for example, if I were to go and search for something a little bit more specific, so hypertension in indigenous Australians, then instead of getting almost 6,000 results, I have a nice, much more succinct um, search pool results section here with just 95 results. And then from here, I can then use my discretion to, to dive into a particular book chapter. Um, yeah, that looks like it relates to what I'm searching for. Um, similarly, when searching for content, as I just alluded to before, you can actually filter for just images as well. So let's just say I'm looking for an image um, on, I don't know, I'll just search for brain. Again, I guess the more specific you can be, the more accurate your search results will be. And I'm gonna select one of these images here to export into PowerPoint. I might actually just go for, yeah, for this one here, for example. Now, once you've clicked on an image, um, the enlarged image will, will present itself. Um, if you did want to get some context to that image and understand you know, where it belongs, where it comes from, and maybe read around the image to get a bit of context, it is possible to click on view in source. That will then take you straight to where that image belongs um, in whichever book chapter or whichever book um, it, it comes from. However, of course, you can also add to presentation. So if I click add to presentation, I can add it to a presentation I've made previously, or I may just decide to add it to midwifery one just for the purposes of this demonstration. I'll add that to midwifery one. That has been successfully added to that presentation. I'm then gonna close down this enlarged image and then navigate towards the presentations tab. So from this view here, you can access all of the other images you may have saved under all of the various other presentations you may have made. But if I want to just go to that particular presentation and image that I've just saved, to export this image into PowerPoint, um, all you need to do is simply click on the download button here. And what should happen is that that image is exported into PowerPoint. Let's try another one. There we go. So now these two images are exported directly into PowerPoint. And what's really nice with this feature um, is that not only can this high quality image um, be enlarged, reduced, it can be cut and pasted into your own slides. And along with it, you also have the auto-generated um, citation here in a text box, which can then go on to form the basis of your referencing. So this functionality goes across every single image, across every single textbook, um, within each collection on Clinical Key Student. And whereas previously there may have been a 20% or also a 10% limit in terms of copyright as to how much um, of a textbook you can, you can host online or how, much, um, how many images you can, you can use, um, effectively you could use 100% of absolutely everything within Clinical Key Student um, for the purposes of teaching at your institution. So that covers off on the presentations as well. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna skip to the resource center as that was an area that I did want to highlight to you um, as well. So if we scroll down towards the bottom of the screen here, you'll see a link to the resource center. Now in the resource center, uh, you can access things like the latest master content list, uh, which is updated on a monthly basis. So every time a new edition is published, um, it is uploaded 
um, typically within uh, a month of publishing onto the platform. However, there is also a six month overlap uh, to allow for an ease of transition between editions. So um, yeah, having both available for six months um, yeah, is, is, is I guess better than having the old edition just vanish when a new edition publishes. So this is the resource center. From here, you can access um, the master content list, as I mentioned before. It is also um, possible to download some implementation tools, such as Mark 21 Records. Um, and then under the English content and resources section here is where you can view um, some sort of user um, guides, but also some awareness driving material for faculty, for students. Um, and what's really nice here as well is there are a host of videos um, and how-to guides as to how you can do a lot of the things that I've just covered off on today. So yeah, the resource center, um, yeah, you can find heaps of useful uh, content within there. Now, the final thing that I'd like to show you today uh, before, I, before I move to Q&A is the help section. Um, so there are multiple layers of support uh, in place for clinical key student. Um, I would suggest um, from a sort of generalist perspective that the first um, port of call, I guess, could be um, you know, your local administrator as a student, so potentially you know, the library or, or you know, the first line of support at the institution. Um, however, I guess another support layer that is available is directly through the sites here. So if I click on get support, there's a contact us area, but then there's also the, the sort of help zone here. And if I click through to this, I'll, I can walk you through what this looks like too. Okay, so within here, obviously, there are some FAQs. Um, there is also the option to search. Um, but then there's also the contact us um, area down here. So you can email, chat, and phone. Um, the email assistance is really good. There's usually a turnaround of, you know, within 24 hours. I know that's not always um, as quick as you need it to be. Um, so there are also um, uh, a few numbers that you can call uh, for direct assistance. However, I believe that these um, have limited um, opening times. But I would suggest the chat function is probably the best way to get um, instant uh, support, um, as there is a 24-hour team um, that, that are on hand to support you uh, with, with any assistance in relation to access or how to use the platform. Um, so, so please bear in mind that that support um, is always there. And then, of course, failing that, um, the third, I guess, level of support that, that is on offer is, is myself. Um, so I am your main point of contact for Clinical Key Student for Australia. Um, I believe most of you have my contact details um, already, but we will be including um, uh, my details in an email uh, following this, this session. Um, and for New Zealand, um, your main point of contact is um, my colleague called Noel Pagal. And then I guess beyond that, the fourth level of support um, is uh, our customer engagement team. Um, so every institution in Australia and New Zealand has a designated customer engagement manager who specialise in helping to drive awareness and help maximise your return on investment. So I think that almost covers um, everything that I wanted to um, talk to you about today. So I think I'm going to sort of hand over um, to one of my colleagues um, in order to, to open up to the floor for Q&A. Hi, George. Hi there. Uh, it's Kath. Um, just a, a question coming in, if you could please go over the uh, faculty registration again. Of course. Thank you. So with faculty registration, uh, I guess just to summarise on that again, um, everybody has the same level of access um, with clinical key student when you create a personal account normally. So once you're IP authenticated and you arrive at clinical key student, creating a, an account um, gives everybody the same level of access. Um, however, for instructors only, we do offer um, registration ID access codes only to instructors, because that's the only way that we can deliver access to the um, ancillary instructor content within here. Um, so in order to do that, you need to redeem a code. Um, the codes typically look like this, so you'll have a set of two codes. And then to redeem those, 
you go to clinicalkey.com forward slash student forward slash nursing forward slash register. And then from here, you can copy and paste your codes into, into the box. I'll try this set of codes. I don't think they've been used before. And then from this point on, once you've redeemed those codes, you can either register if you haven't registered before or log in if you have. And actually, I should probably spend a bit of time looking at those ancillary materials with you as well. So if I go back and just log in, the additional materials can be browsed and they can also be searched and they can also be accessed on a title by title basis. So let's say I'm looking again for um, uh, understanding Once I access the textbook and I'm taken to the table of contents, you'll see there's a tab for the table of contents and a tab for the additional material as well. So this content traditionally has been accessed through our Ancillary Evolve website. However, we are also making it accessible through Clinical Key Student as well by redeeming access codes, especially for faculty. You can also search for additional material too. So let's say I'm um, preparing for um, a subject on say, for example, the cardiovascular system. And I wanna search for additional material in relation to that. Obviously it's gonna bring up quite a large uh, pool of, of results. But then over on the left hand side here, you have the ability to filter these results. And so if I were just looking say, for example, for questions and answers in relation to the cardiovascular system, uh, more broadly, um, you know, agnostic of which textbook it comes from, I can search this way. And then from here, I'm able to select um, a particular um, set of materials and then open the PDF this way. So then this PDF is then downloaded and can be used um, however you see fit at the discretion of um, your teaching. I hope that answers the question. Um, as I say, we do have user guides on how to um, redeem um, registration IDs, um, which should help if you get stuck. Hi, George. There was just one question about there being question banks. Yes. So okay. can you just perhaps select some of those in the additional material? Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, we've looked, in terms of the additional material, we've looked at how to find them um, on a textbook by textbook basis. So as I just showed you um, just a moment ago, these are available next to the table of contents view. Um, you can, of course, as I also just um, demonstrated, search for these by filtering on additional material first. Um, but then there is also the ability to browse additional material too. So if I go to the browse resources tab here and select the additional material uh, section within browse resources, if I were to scroll down on the left hand side um, on the filter results area, um, I do have the option um, within here just to filter on question and answers, which I believe is the question banks um, that's being referred to in this question. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. And you can search for them text specific within the textbook. That's correct, yeah. So from here, I can filter on just questions and answers and then filter under a particular uh, specialty that I'm looking for. So these tools and um, ancillary materials can really help, I guess, to supplement um, yeah, the delivery of your curriculums um, in a sort of remote and online situation. But I think it really just comes back to um, the main, I guess, elements of value um, that I see within Clinical Key Student is just simply providing equal access to all staff and all students um, to this wide breadth and depth of you know, current credible um, information relevant to their studies. 
All right, well, as I mentioned before, um, this session is being recorded. So please feel free to um, share the link to this recording, which will um, be embedded within an email that we'll be sending to you after this session. In that email as well, there will also be my contact details, as well as uh, Noel Pagal's contact details for any customers in New Zealand. So if there's nothing else, I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention today. It's been an absolute pleasure having the opportunity to walk you through how Clinical Key Student can support um, remote and online teaching and learning. And I look forward very much to working with you all over these coming uh, weeks, months um, and years. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.